Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to cover sensitivity analysis and focus it towards closed loop control systems. But of course, sensitivity analysis isn't um, unique to closed loop control systems, but that's going to be our take on it. And here's our notation. So let's say we want to look at the sensitivity of some function f that is a function of a parameter k, and we'll denote it like this, where this capital S is the actual value of the sensitivity that we're going to calculate. And so we'll say that this is the sensitivity of f to k. And what it is, is once we have that number, capital S, is it's the percent change in f over the percent change in k. And what it tells us is that if we have a small change in the parameter k, how much the value of f is going to change. And mathematically, oops, it's df dk times k over f. And then once you go through all this math and you uh, have this s, sensitivity, as a function of k, you go ahead and let k equal k0, some nominal value of that parameter, and then you'll just have a number for s. That if you change uh, k by some amount, let's say 10%, then you can quickly calculate how much, as a percentage, f is going to change. So let's do a couple examples. Uh, we'll start with a real simple one. And again, sort of focused on closed loop control systems. So in that spirit, let's say that we have a closed loop transfer function, y over r, that looks like this beautiful looking thing. Uh, and let's go ahead and find the sensitivity of its DC gain, so that's going to be my function f, with respect to the controller gain k. Well first off we can get the DC gain of this transfer function. Um, let's call this g. If I do that then the DC gain of g is equal to the limit is s goes to 0 of g. Now of course we have to make sure that all the poles of g are in the left half plane in order to do this and as long as I pick k positive they are so I'll just go ahead and assume that my final value theorem is legitimate. So what this tells us is that the DC gain is 1. Now of course we can just look at this then and say well the sensitivity of the DC gain to changes in k should be 0. And there is absolutely no sensitivity of the DC gain to K. But let's just do our math and check it. So DC gain to K is equal to, we take the derivative of our DC gain, and I'll just write it out one more time, with respect to K times K over the DC gain. Well, this thing annihilates the sensitivity, and so I get zero. Perfect. It's exactly what we thought it should be. Let's do another DC gain focused one, and then we'll go on to a block diagram type closed loop system. Well now let's say that my y over r is equal to this. s squared plus 2s plus 10 plus k. And I'll do the same thing where I go after the sensitivity of the DC gain to k. That's what I'll try to solve for. Well, if we get our DC gain expression, it's now 10 over 10 plus k. So it's definitely a function of k. And so I can go ahead and find this. Let's see, this will be negative uh, 10 over 10 plus k squared. That's d DC gain dk times k over the DC gain, so that'd be 10 plus k over 10. And if I work all this out, so let's see, those cancel, one of those cancels with that, so I'll get negative k over 10 plus k. Great. Well, let's, let's try a couple little side examples associated with this. Let's say that for some reason I had a controller gain k0 of 2. So I picked k to be 2, and I'm calling that k0 now. 
So now my sensitivity of DC gain with respect to K is equal to negative 2 over 12. And that is about negative 0.17. Now, what this means is, if I were to change K by 10%, so let's say if I go from uh, K0 equal 2, increase it by 10%, to 2.2, then according to this, my DC gain is going to go down by 1.7%. So for in, in rough terms, if I go up with my gain of 10%, I go down with my DC gain of 2%. So it gives us some directional information with this sign, and it tells us um, how much it's going to go. Now, if I had another design where, for some reason, I picked my K to be, oh, well, don't say 20, then the sensitivity of the DC gain with respect to K, and the expression that we had before was negative K over 10 plus K. So now it would be negative 20 over 30. So now it's two-thirds, or negative two-thirds, so negative 0.67. So now, if I play that same game, where I say that my k0 uh, goes from 20 up 10% to 22, now my DC gain is going to go down by 6.7%. So quite a significant uh, change in the DC gain, at least compared to the, the previous example. Well, now let's do one more example, and I'm going to go to a clean sheet, and we'll do something a little bit more interesting than DC gain, and then play around with it a little bit in MATLAB. So here's a reference input, and I'll have a controller that is K over S plus 3.1 and a rather simple plant, 1 over s plus 1. Some unity feedback. Beautiful. And what we're going to do is first find k. So the 10 to 90 percent rise time, we'll call it tr, is about 0.5 seconds. Once we find that value of k, then let's find the sensitivity of the rise time with respect to k at, again, that k that gave us the rise time of 0.5 seconds. So what that will tell us is that if we had some small change in k, how much it's going to affect, maybe disturb, our rise time design. Okay, well let's get started. So we have to find the closed loop transfer function, y over r, and that is k over s plus 3.1 s plus 1 divided by that whole thing again. And let's see, so we'll get an s squared plus 4.1s plus 3.1 plus k. There we go. Now, luckily, what we have here is a closed loop transfer function that is second order with no zeros. So, we know from our uh, time domain performance specification design formulas for second order systems that the rise time is roughly 1.8 over omega n, where omega n is equal to the square root of 3.1 plus k. That term right there, that's omega n squared. So let's go ahead and calculate our rise time. Let's see, 1.8 over the square root of 3.1 plus k. This is what we had before. And so I'll do some rearranging. 1.8 equals 0.5 square root of 3.1 plus k. And if I go ahead and square both sides, I'll get this. There we go. 
And now let's see, I can divide through by the 0.25, and whoops, I squared both sides so I can get rid of this. Go ahead and divide through by 0.25, and I'll get 12.96 equals 3.1 plus k, and so k is equal to 9.86. Okay, so there's our design that gives us a rise time of about 0.5 seconds. Now before we go on and do the sensitivity calculations, let's hop into MATLAB and check this. And the way that we'll check it, we'll just make sure that we actually get a rise time of 0.5, is we'll stick in this closed loop transfer function. The closed loop transfer function associated with this design. Let's code up the transfer function using the tf command. And we have 9.86 in the numerator and in the denominator an s squared plus 4.1s plus 12.96. There it is. We'll use the step info command. And there is our rise time, 0.4954. That's pretty close to 0.5. And just for fun, let's go ahead and take a look at this in LTI view. It's a beautiful looking step response. Uh, the DC gain is about 0.76 or so. And if we right click in here and take a look at the rise time, the distance between those two vertical lines should be about 0.5 seconds. Great. So now let's go back to the slides and calculate our sensitivity. So the sensitivity we're after is the rise time with respect to K. And just to bring this back to the original definitions. It's, it'll tell us the percent change in rise time over the percent change in that parameter k. And of course that's d rise time dk times k over the rise time. And our rise time expression was 1.8 over the square root of 3.1 plus k. And we can write that like so, negative one half, and then go ahead and calculate the sensitivity. And so we get negative 1.8 over 2, 3.1 plus k to the negative one half, negative three halves, times k, uh, divided by the rise times, so that'll be 3.1 plus k to the one half, over not k but 1.8 and now we get lots of nice cancellation we get a cancellation here with that one and so what we end up with is negative k over 2 times the quantity 3.1 plus k great so there's our rise time sensitivity with respect to k. And now if we let k equal 9.86, we actually get a numerical value for this. The sensitivity of rise time with respect to k is about negative 0.38. So what this means is that if k, I'll just use that 10% example again, if k goes up by 10%, so in other words, k goes from 9.86 to about 10.85, then the rise time is going to go down by 3.8%. That is, our rise time is going to go from 0.5 down to about 0.48. Small change, 0 0.02, but could be significant depending on how important that design uh, objective is. Now let's see, we can check this, we can check this result simply by putting in our boosted up value of k, 10.85, back into here. And I'll carve out a little space right there. And if we go 1.8 over the square root of 3.1 plus 10.85, and you calculate that out, you do get 0.48. So that's a check no big surprise there. The more important thing is that if we go into MATLAB and check the closed loop transfer function with that boosted up gain, does it give us that, um, predict that same change in the rise time from 0.5 to 0.48? So let's just take a quick look at that. 
Here's the closed loop transfer function for the larger value of k. When we increase k from 9.86 by 10%, we get this. And so I'll stick this into MATLAB and use the step info command and let's see what we get. So let me code up g again. And now it's 10.85. And let's see. There we go. That's a beautiful looking G, and step info G, and there's our rise time, about 0.47, maybe even a little less than 0.47. So it's not 0.48, and the reason it's not is because of the design formula that we use, which was the rise time is approximately equal to 1.8 over omega n. But of course that rise time is actually more, it's also dependent on the damping ratio, and we really didn't bring that into account. We just used the approximate formula of 1.8 over omega n. So it doesn't surprise me that we're a little bit off. But at least our rise time sensitivity calculation showed us the correct direction and got us in the ballpark of how much the rise time is going to change for that percent change in k. So just to summarize, um, after a brief introduction to the definition of sensitivity, did a couple examples. One of them really trivial, where the DC gain was 1 and the sensitivity was 0, but at least our math checked out. And then went into a little bit more interesting example where we did some closed loop design and then looked at the sensitivity of our design to changes in the design parameter k. And that's a pretty realistic scenario. That is, you could come up with some control design to hit your design requirements very nicely, but then over time perhaps something in the control system changes and you would want to know how much that is going to affect your closed loop performance. Again, my name is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech and thanks for watching.